Hi everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today. And we'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Hello, Bill Hope in the house. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing, Flynn? I'm really good, thank you. Uh, in the house and in your house. Um, so we're both streaming from home today, as usual. Um, that was our new intro, check it out. I don't know if we're the first to use it. It, it might was have very been cool. Pretty cool, right? Oh, um, I like it. <laughs> my favorite thing is that it doesn't have the, the title of the stream in it anymore. So I don't have to render a video uh, twice nice. a week, which is just a lovely little time saver. Um, super cool. That was made by Odd Fellows. Um, if anyone, uh, if you're aware of them, if uh, if you're aware of them, you know. But if you if you don't, definitely check them out. Um, they do amazing stuff, um, and they've created that intro for us, which is really really cool. Um, but yeah, here we here we are with Bill Hope. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, so we're doing writing prompts for Bill. So we're totally putting Bill on the spot. Um, he hasn't seen any of these writing prompts yet. Um, who knows where we're going to go? Um, Bill has full creative license. Uh, to take this um, in wh whichever direction um, he may choose. Um, and it should be a little bit of fun. And if you want to throw yeah. some suggestions in chat, you can throw it in too. So Bill, are you nervous or what's up? You fine? Uh, I'm feeling okay. I, I mean, a uh, majority of my job is doing, uh, um, drawing what people tell me to draw. Um, so working to a brief. So it's kind of nice that the, I, I don't have to do any feedback this time. I just kind of, yeah. you give me the prompt and I, I draw away. So. I'm hoping I can keep up. Uh, we, were, we were chatting just before we got online. This is kind of um, extreme Pictionary. And I, I, I've trained hard in my youth um, playing lots of Pictionary with family. So I feel like I'm as ready as I can be for this. So, does, yeah. does everyone just want to be on your team in Pictionary or, or are you just not A allowed to play? A little bit. There, there is more to Pictionary than just drawing well. Like you kind of got to draw fast and, and it's all about, um, like I've got three siblings and I feel like a lot of the trick is getting teamed up with a sibling where you've got the most kind of like mind meld, same references and things like that. Yeah, so you totally. can kind of like knock off something and they know exactly what you're talking about. So it's about teamwork kids. It's about yeah, teamwork. it's about teamwork. I like it. I like it a lot. I definitely want to be on your team. Um, but let's let's jump in because um, time is always of, of the essence. So um, so the idea is here, we have a bunch that we're, that we, you know, um, Johanna and I have had a lot of fun coming up with. Um, they're kind of based on something that you might know. It doesn't mean you have to draw the thing or have to try to figure it out before you start putting uh, Wacom to screen. Um, but uh, anyway, let's jump into it. All right, this is the first one. It's a creature. Okay. Um, cool. So this creature is a legendary sea monster of enormous size and said to be it's said to appear off the coasts of Norway. Um, it is the subject of sailors' superstitions and mythos. I can say that all again. Norway. Ah, That's no, right. No, no, no. I'm happy to, happy to get started and see what I can do. I'll so, repeat it. And um, also for anyone watching at home, we've just got the description down the bottom as well. So it should be a bit of fun. Um, so it is down the bottom. I don't know, Bill, if you can see that, but that's the drawing pomp verbatim, um, what I sent out. So yeah, this creature is a legendary sea monster of enormous size, it's said to appear off the coast of Norway. Um, the subject of sailors' superstitions and mythos. It is of tremendous okay. size. I missed out the tremendous. We had enormous for this. and I'm tremendous. Getting a bit of a Scandinavian vibe um, uh, from the whole thing. Yeah. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm going to draw all, all that I've got in mind, but um, I suspect I've, I've kind of got it wrong. So I'm going to start with uh, um, some uh, surface of the notion here. Um, we're going to have to work in some scale. So I'm going to start off. Uh, um, with with a, uh, uh, a ship um, off of distance, so we kind of know what, what size monster that we're talking about here. So I'll start just piecing together a little little sail ship. Um, and uh, off the coast of Norway, I feel so frustrated that I don't... I, I, I thought you'd start off easy with these, but um, uh, <laughs> my, um, my uh, experience of Norwegian monsters is, is limited. I feel like I'm pretty good on the whole sea monster thing, but... Um, uh, may, maybe not this one. So we're going to have some big waves of uh, this thing I, breaching. I, I, I um, would suggest I would suggest not overthinking it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to go with with my first inclination, and uh, and this is kind of uh, um, in the in the the news a little bit because there was a a real life version of this monster um, that turned up um, uh, on the south coast of New South Wales recently. Um, uh, which uh, was kind of interesting to see. I'm sure I've got this wrong because it's not really a monster, 
but I'm just going to go for sort of the mythical uh, white whale with this one. So we've got a, a huge white whale here, breaching and uh, terrifying the, um, the, the the shipping shipping um, uh, <laughs> courses here. They look I'm so sure. happy to be like disturbing everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is kind of uh, standard. I don't think I've got the eye quite in the right place. Where's a, where's a whale's eye? Right here. Might put some barnacles on this one, on the nose. Um, and it's 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 going for a, a, a big bridge here. I'm sure I've got this one one wrong, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just dash it out so I can get onto something that I've got a bit more a bit more confidence in. Okay, and we've got a little Ahab. Um, terrified of the white whale um, with his, uh, I don't know, he's wearing a top hat. Okay, that's <laughs> Why what not? I've got, Flynn. I have tell, me, tell me where I've gone wrong. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think you went any. I don't think there is any right or wrong in this. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the description. It wasn't what we were describing. We were describing a kraken. A kraken. For some reason, I just had it in my mind. It makes total sense now that it's a it's a it's a Viking kraken. I, I just I think you know what my problem is. Um, my main kraken reference is. Um, uh, from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie and the bit where they meet the Kraken, I'm pretty sure they've just been to Jamaica at that point. So for right. some reason, I had it in my mind as a kind of equatorial touring monster. But yeah, Kraken makes sense. That I makes that it. that makes sense. I th I think history and geography and getting it um, from um, Pirates of the Caribbean probably probably might not be your best go to. Yeah, it's a misguided. <laughs> um, okay, okay, give me the next one. I'm 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 feeling like I can get the next one. Okay. Um, all right. Where are we, Johanna? Johanna's helping me out. Um, that one's too long. Um, okay. Uh, she has lavender lights. Leven she has light lavender skin, short white hair, and her body from the waist down is black with six tentacles dotted by velvet suckers. <laughs> okay. I think I think I know the character that you're talking about, but. Um... Uh, there, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to um, uh, draw them accurately from memory, but I'm going to give it my best bet. So I'm going to start with the um, with the head. Um, I think this is a Disney character, so I'm going to start with some nice big eyes. And one of the things I can remember about this character is I'm pretty sure they've got some some fantastic eyelashes going on, and maybe some quite arched eye, eye, eyebrows. I'm gonna to have to find a reference of this actual character once I'm finished here because um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'd be really interested to see what I got right and what I got wrong. I'm gonna give her some scary um, spiky teeth, even though I doubt she has that in the in the film. Um, let's just shade it in here. For anyone wondering, I'm just using uh, the most uh, standard uh, Photoshop brush. I've got the opacity turned down a little bit so I can kind of give it a bit more of a, a sketchy feeling. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just uh, moving around the canvas as quick as I can. Um, so I'm going to give it some fantastic big hair here. So just Remember to the... jump, just to jump in as you're describing, it's great. Um, so the the description was um, she has light lavender skin, short white hair, and her body from the waist down is black with six tentacles dotted by velvet suckers. There we go. All right. Um, so I've got short, short white hair here, lavender skin. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people have uh, already guessed it before me, but I'm guessing we're we're drawing the. Um, I can't remember what her name is. I, I don't know if I've actually ever seen this movie, but it's the the villain from The Little Mermaid, I believe, is is the character that we're going for. You are correct. I'll give it to you I'm if you correct. get it right. Yeah, you are fantastic. correct. Uh, her name's okay. Urs Ursula. She's a fantastic That's a lot. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually yeah, watched so that with my daughter these... the other day. Um, oh, really? She's like jellyfish because uh, jellyfish and <laughs> octopus are octopi are the same at the yeah, moment. Yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> um, so I will uh, uh, just sketch her in here. So I'm going to get some arms in. I think she had some kind of um, kind of corset sort of uh, costume that she wears. Um, and I'm guessing she's in the middle of a, a, a long ballad about all the terrible thing that she's going to do to our, our main character at this point. Um, 
I love like the analysis of like Disney movies and things like that now, like from, from previously. I've seen, you know, people say like Ursula didn't do anything wrong. She, she made a deal and Ariel accepted it and that was, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a film all about honor, honoring your commitments to contracts. Um, yes. Uh, Elon Musk should have uh, tuned in a little bit more, perhaps. There's a uh, tech stocks joke for all you kids out there. Yeah. Uh, following along. Um, Crypto joke. <laughs> um, all right, so we got one, two, three, four. We need uh, a fifth and a sixth tentacle coming out here. It's interesting it's that she has a... six. I guess she has six uh, tentacles because the two, two arms. arms. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that was a as a, a, a strong topic of conversation with the design because uh, I don't know. Kids are sticklers for this kind of thing. It's like you learn your ABCs, and the octopuses have eight tentacles. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to make sure they get it right. Don't think the animators oh, were being right. lazy and they're like, let's just make it six. Like, yeah. We've already got two yeah. arms. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> All right, that's that's my that's my first attempt at this character. That's amazing. Should we Thank should you. we like Google a picture of Ursula and just see how it's gone from memory? A side by side, I think would be good. Uh, that would be good. Do you want me to do that on my end? Or? Yeah, just because you're still still sharing, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, so, what are the the motivations of uh, poor Ursula? Um, what what did uh, I mean? How did the Little Mermaid uh, wrong her? Uh, I can't remember. I didn't watch the. I didn't watch the whole thing. It's actually a movie I hadn't seen either, um, yeah. and I think I've seen the first half like ten times or something like that, but never, never the end. Um, but she makes a deal with her that's something like um, she got to get legs so she could walk on land. Um, yeah. But there was a deal made for that, um, and in the process, she loses her voice, so she can't talk. Ah, but she has I legs. See. Right. That's okay, pretty well, good for someone that hasn't seen the movie. Um, well, for not seeing the movie, that was that was me doing my best uh, based on on my memories. That's yep. great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't quite get right, but uh, generally, you know, we're in the same same kind of ballpark there. Did well uh, to uh, from Little Mermaid. like have absorbed the knowledge that's kind of wearing like almost a corset kind of kind of thing there. That's that's good. And the yeah, short, I, short I hair. Mean, it's one of those amazing things about Disney that it's so pervasive that I haven't seen the film, but I kind of know. Uh, you sort of in your subconscious somewhere is, is the details of that kind of thing. Yeah, um, awesome. All right. Uh, if there's any uh, comments or suggestions from chat of uh, uh, scenarios you'd like me to try out, um, feel free to chuck them in there. Or if there's any just general Photoshop, Illustration, whatever questions, um, send them over as well. And, That's um, great. Yeah, we'll keep going. Yeah. YouTube or Behance, throw, throw them in while we're drawing along. We don't mind taking a bit of a detour as we're going through. Um, so I have a, another person, mm -hmm. uh, this is a fictional character, I'll give you that. Um, a stout fellow with red cheeks, taller than some and fairer than most, with a cleft chin, a bright eye and a perky personality. I'll do that again. It again. It's one, pretty one vague. Um, stout fellow with red cheeks, yeah. taller than some and fairer than most, with a cleft chin, a bright eye, and a perky personality. <laughs> How is he a stout fellow, but taller than most? That, that's, that's really throwing me off there. Um, taller, taller than some, fairer than most. Fairer than most. I'd focus more on the stout fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go with... Uh, the first thing that pops on my head seeing is that I think I was sort of uh, overthinking it the, the last time. Um, and okay, we're going to start off with, uh, it's a stout fellow, so I'm going to start off with kind of like Ursula with a big, big cheekbone coming out there. I'll start with the head. And I'm going to start with uh, um, a, a big, big nose. We're going to have a um, big kind of uh, ball shape on the end of the nose there. And I'm going to give him a moustache. Actually, you know what? It can't be it. I was going to start drawing Santa, but he can't be Santa because surely with Santa, you wouldn't see his cleft chin. Um, we're going to need that's someone a, that's else. A, that's a good call. I like this detective work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with a cleft chin. Maybe I'll just start drawing the cleft chin and I'll see if it comes to me uh, as we go. So we've got a big cleft chin there. This is a tough one. Um, this is a tough one. Yeah. Stop. 
hold and just feeling a moustache. Uh, Misty, a, in, uh... Misty in chat guessed uh, Santa Claus as well. So that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, we miss you in the same I guess boat. the word like stout is um yeah associated with um you know Mr. Kringle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give him a sparkle in his eye. So we better have a big highlight on his eye there. Um, and of course, if you're watching, you can guess. You want to take a guess, throw it in chat, YouTube or Behance. Yeah, this is feeling like it's, it's sort of like, um, um, uh, and uh, I don't mean to put you in this character role, but uh, I feel like uh, Frodo Baggins being given riddles by Gollum um, to, uh, to be given his, his freedom, you know, a bit in Lord of the Rings. I do. Um, um, sorry, I, I didn't want to make you out to be uh, Gollum. Uh, but just kind of... <laughs> Just kind of worked out that way. Um, I'm fine. I'm fine with being Gollum. It's interesting that your mind went there. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Scout fella. You know, I'm just going to draw what I'm imagining and then let's just see how close I've got here. Um, um, I think I'm going for someone who's like, kind of like a, uh, a, um, uh, the uh, the leprechaun from that American serial. Um, oh yeah. Um, what uh, what are those? It's not Rice Krispies. Um, oh, it's Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's funny when that sort of thing like gets into movies and kind of pop culture, and we see it a lot. But never like I've never tasted it. Like it's quite. I always find it quite quite funny when like particularly like you know content from America like breakfast food or famous coffees or something like that. Coffee's a bad example because we all know Starbucks, but um, yeah, like Lucky Charms, I've never tasted it before, but there's so many movies with it as reference in there. I guess yeah. it was just so prolific in America. It's part of the part of the culture, but it doesn't, doesn't transcend. Yeah, is the whole thing with Lucky Charms that um, it's got marshmallows in it? Is that kind of the thing? I guess so, which, you know, probably shouldn't be eating for breakfast no offense no it's not great i mean i i um i went to america when i was about six and stayed with my grandmother and had uh, captain crunch for the first time there oh yeah and even as a five-year-old i was kind of scandalized that this was something that people would be having for breakfast but, um <laughs> you know americans could do what they like it was a bit sweet uh it's captain very crunch. sweet but it's like incredibly crunchy it like sort of you sort of like really hurt your mouth trying to crunch it it's it's right. um it's a, it's a, it's a, a lot of work. Wow. So okay. This, Captain, this is the character Captain, that, that it, yeah, come on. Captain for a reason, I was going to say. This is great. All right. Um, put me out of my misery, Flynn. This is so much harder than I thought it would be. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll, that, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that that last, I'd be pretty impressed if anybody got that last one, but I thought you were trolling me a second ago when you said, um, Frodo and Gollum. Is it Frodo? Yeah. Ah. <sighs> There you go. Okay. And I was like, is, he, is, is, is Frodo a tall hobbit? Is that the I thing? Don't, I don't know. <laughs> Johanna, you're on the hook for this one. Um, <laughs> taller than some. Um, oh, I see. So in the actual description that, we, that we'd found, it was taller than some hobbits. Taller but that would, have, hobbits, that would okay. have given too much away. But actually subtracting yeah. that word, I think negates this taller than some part of that sentence so right um i'm just going to go ahead and draw his, his mount doom in the background and uh i guess this is just frodo on, on the way to fancy dress party or something <laughs> still counts oh my goodness um that's amazing i i just i got so excited when you started talking about it i was like what has he got it but he's drawing a leprechaun what's going on that's amazing um highlight of my day for sure um if anyone else has a description they want to throw in feel free to do that um but uh we'll, we'll keep going on because we've got quite a few um you ready for another one bill sure sure all right um much shorter description uh she's tall with skin as pale as snow and has a fierce, stern appearance. Tall, with skin, pale as snow, with a fierce, stern appearance. 
Oh, sorry. I thought I was going to nail this. I think I'm zero for zero so far. Um, uh, I, I doubt Snow White's got a, uh, a stern appearance. Um, she's tall, the skin is pale. I mean, I, if it's Lord of the Rings, it could be sort of... Um, uh, uh, okay, I'm just going to start drawing someone again. And um, may, maybe you could uh, dripply feed one or two more clues to me as I, as I go on. Okay, so the hint is in the the, the snow. Um, okay. And because they've been very difficult, I'll give you, I'll, I'll even give you what she is. Um, she is a witch of some right. kind. Okay. Um, She's tall with skin as pale as snow and has a okay. fierce, stern appearance. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm guessing it will need to be the... Uh, White Witch um, from, um, uh, I don't know if I'm completely correct on that, but I'm guessing the White Witch from Narnia. Um, and uh, hmm. I think I'll keep going with, with, with this sketch. I was trying to do a sort of, I might try a completely symmetrical drawing of this character. It's just going to be um, looking very intense and severe. Um, so, um, for any Photoshop people following along, I'm just using the, um, the, uh, symmetry tool. Um, and let's just kind of sketch out our character here. Um, and I might put her in a witchy-like pose, uh, casting some sort of spell. Um, so, um, I'm gonna be using, um, there's a, there's a statue, I think, by Rubens that I really like called... Actually, no, it's by uh, an Australian sculptor called Cirque. It's the, the um, uh, Roman god Cirque, and she kind of does these amazing outstretched hands. So I'm going to try something kind of in that style. Oh, wow. Um, and because she's the Snow Queen, maybe I'll give her a big puffy coat. Um, she's got some nice big high cheekbones. interesting it's almost like you know that you've picked a perspective where she's you know kind of got a chin up a little bit or, or you're looking up to towards her she has like a very statuesque like you know, mm. dominating kind of look is that something that was intentional or is that just because i i don't know is that oh you know, yeah yeah definitely it's kind of, kind of the, mm. the vibe i'm going for yeah um have a nice long dress get some big sleeves coming down Get a bit of fur. It's definitely something unethical, like baby seal or something like that, because she's the white witch. Um, uh, what do we got? Might get some nice like, toggles on her coat. Big kind of dress. She could be casting some sort of snowy spell. I'm drawing it as quickly spell. as I can. <laughs> snowy spell. I, I guess she's. She's turning something into ice. Um, it is nice using the symmetry tool or something like this. I mean, you can draw sort of twice as much as you would normally, but um, um, there's lots of poses like this that really benefit from mm. uh, um, being able to see how it comes together um, uh, on both sides at once. And can you just show people where to find the symmetry tool and add it in just while we're while we're going along? We'll teach a couple of things as while we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just in case so, people don't know. Uh, just while I'm drawing with the standard brush tool in Photoshop, um, uh, you've got this nice little butterfly icon up the top of your screen. So you just click on that, and you've got a bunch of different options of different uh, templates that you can use to kind of duplicate your drawing. Um, so I'm using the most basic one, which is just called vertical. So it just puts a line down the middle of your piece of paper. You can move the line around uh, you like. Um, and then once you start drawing with the brush tool, anything you draw on one side appears on the other side. And uh, same with erasing as well. So you can see I'm just kind of shaping the chin here, and, and as I sketch and, and draw each side, um, it uh, does the same on the other side accordingly. And cool. it's great for just uh, playing around with stuff like this. It's good to, um, it's, a, it's a really nice way of just starting knocking out faces. Um, mm. And yeah, it's a really fun tool to play around with. All right. Good. Okay, happy with that one. Um, still, 
three for three. My luck. Um, let's try one more flip. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to get one. Well, you got this one. With a lot of help. With a lot of help. You got this one. I think that I think that counts. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that some of these have been pretty vague. Um, so let's see how you go with this one. Um, much shorter description for you. He was born <laughs> with a severe hunchback and a giant wart okay. that covers his left eye. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let, let's spend a little time on this one. I think we're, 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 we're relatively established. Um, uh, so we've got our friend from Notre Dame. I can vaguely remember in my mind what the character, again, this is another Disney film that I've, I've um, uh, never seen, um, but uh, it would be fun to sort of uh, um, work on this character and see if we can see what it looks like. Um, so we're trying the, um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Is it Victor Hugo who wrote the original book? Yeah, Victor Hugo. There you go. Um, I only remember that because there was a cartoon series called Victor and Hugo. Oh, um, was it about Victor it, Hugo at all? It had nothing to do with it, but... Um, there were Victor and Hugo bunglers in crime and they used to, it was like a five minute thing on ABC. Um, one of those things, you know, there'd be like trapdoor stuff like that. I don't know if you ever watched that yeah. sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it was like a five minute, you know, little animated series, but I ended up watching all of them because you just watch all that stuff back to back. Yeah, yeah. But then you hear something okay, like I, in the future and you're like, oh, that's where they got Victor and Hugo from. It was obviously yeah, Victor yeah. Hugo and they were French. Um, I assume Victor Hugo was French. Um, uh, right, so it was a little nod to... Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of Trapdoor and things like that because I, um, um, uh, I didn't have a TV growing up. Um, and it was kind of like the main thing that people knew about me as a kid. I was like the weird kid that didn't have a TV. Right. And I went to I went to this um, thing in my, my hometown um, a couple of weeks ago, and I was chatting to someone who I hadn't seen in a long, long time, but had known me from back in the day when I was at primary school. And I was telling him that I worked as a, an illustrator now, and this guy stopped and kind of looked in the distance and thought like, no TV, it all <laughs> makes sense now. You didn't yeah. have anything to do, so you yeah. became an illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine the hours and hours like we spend in front of a tv or something particularly particularly growing up it's either that or read like thousands and thousands of books right you probably yeah. did that too um not really i wasn't i mean i, I do like to read but i wasn't a, a huge reader um mm. but we had lots and lots of comics and picture books and stuff like that so that was kind of my my thing um uh, so I've got a wizened but friendly face um, that I'm that I'm kind of working on here, um, and uh, we've got uh, um, the hunchback shape there, um, and it's going to have sort of um, draped clothes. So I might give him a big scarf. He's going to have a big belt around his middle. So now that I've got the face down, I'm kind of just drawing out the big shapes of this character. Um, um, and I might give him some sort of uh, floppy old shoes. Um, so almost like kind of clown shoes that I'm just going to sketch out. Um, and he's going to be giving us a little wave. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't really know anything about this character, but I think he's meant to be a nice guy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll try and do him to him justice. Sorry if you can hear my uh, puppy losing his mind in the background there. So good. He's um, determined to protect the household. <laughs> All right. Put post post people and deliveries. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just anything. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. We've got one now. Um, let, me, let me see if I can like, see if I can try another. Oh, while I'm, while I'm here sketching away at this character. Better put a little bit of background in, and um, uh, again, I cannot remember the exact shape, but I think this would be along the right lines of um, what's the name of the church? He's the Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's Notre Dame. There you go. There's a clue in the clue in the title. Um, so yeah, let's try and Notre Dame University in the background. You get away with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get points for that still. Have you ever been to Notre Dame, Flynn? No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing church. 
All right. Well, that's that's roughly what it looks like from the front. Awesome. Well, you did guess correctly. So okay. 10 space points to you. Um, okay. Redeemable at the end of the stream for sure. Fantastic. Um, and Misty lets us know in chat that the hunchback was very compassionate. There you go. That's a good word. There you go. Well, I hope, yeah, I hope he's got a compassionate look to him. Very good. Okay. So you're you're gaining more space points now, which is great. Um, great. Just been good. So I don't know. I don't know if you're you're getting better at picking them or we're getting better at writing them. Um, but together, together we're going strong. Um, all right. So um, I get to pick this one. Johanna's passing it on to me. Um, mm -hmm. All right. We've got one. And again, while we're still here, if anybody has any suggestions for this stream or the next one, you can throw them in chat. Um, it's got to be vague enough, um, but not too vague as we've discovered um, together. So uh, I picked one, all right. Um, a small Asian elephant, his skin is gray, his eyes are blue and his tail is very small. His ears are very large, which the other elephants don't like, but he uses <laughs> them to fly. So you know, if I could guess a different elephant, I would, but I literally don't know any other ones. Could, could, we, but, could, we have, could we have said an elephant and you might have actually picked this yeah, one? Was everything else superfluous? Um, but luckily, so, you've, 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 well, or perhaps unfortunately for you, you've, you've landed on one of my favorite things to draw. So um, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best and we can have a little elephant uh, drawing uh, lesson while we're at it. Um, uh, and we'll try and make it as cute as possible. Um, okay, so we've got a big ball for the body, another big ball for the head. I've worked in just uh, the, the, um, the trunk there. Let's start sketching in some eyes. And I, if I remember correctly, a kind of uh, stereotypical look of uh, uh, Dumbo, who I believe we're talking about, is, is sort of giving you kind of the looking up puppy eyes kind of look. And he's got some nice big eyelashes, so I'm gonna try and work in um, some nice big eyelashes and some big puppy eyes on top of this elephant. So let's just kind of get the essentials down there. I'm just kind of fill in um, those nice big eyes there. My my one year old puppy Acorn is getting very very good at giving me this look. It's 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 rough. Uh, the literal puppy dog eyes. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, all right. Now the tricky thing um, about this is um, how do we draw um, ears? I don't really remember how they did in the movie, but how do we draw some big ears um, that are going to look like they're flying? So it might be interesting to sort of describe. Like I'm drawing kind of like kind of big random shapes here that will hopefully turn into a, a ear that we're seeing from the side. And when I'm doing something like this, it's it's kind of interesting to sort of think about like if you've got a piece of paper like this uh just trying to sort of spend time drawing the piece of paper in in variously sort of folded forms like that and kind of imagining just what a really simple shape like a piece of paper looks at like from different angles oh wow yeah. and and you sort of spend enough time doing that and and in your mind's eye you can kind of imagine how something folds and and moves in space you yeah. actually do this a lot when it's you're growing things like um, like a rose or something. It, it makes all these these funny shapes where the petals are kind of curving over themselves, um, uh, and and you kind of have to imagine what a two dimensional surface looks like as it as it curves around. And you do this a lot with say like drawing uh, leaves as well as they kind of fold fold over themselves. Mm. I remember once as a kid drawing I was drawing some grass like you do as a kid. And I accidentally drew a piece of grass like this, right. where the lines crossed over each other completely by accident. But it was the first time I kind of got what it meant when you were like a blade of grass turns and you have to try and draw it from different angles. And it really blew my mind at the time. Um, uh, so all that's kind of just a way of explaining sort of like, now that I get to drawing this ear, I'm kind of thinking about how it folds over each other and what you'd see from different kind of angles. Mm. Um, that's that's brilliant yeah and like i guess also because something i've often kind of struggled to really understand kind of in my head it doesn't doesn't make sense i don't draw enough but is how you can draw something th like thick rather than thin 
like a thicker yes. ribbon by drawing yeah. rather than so you're talking about paper which is virtually you know virtually you know 100 microns you know thick or something like that but if you want to mm. but i've seen um we actually had uh dale bagini on the stream recently and he did these really thick looking like ribbons like tattoo kind of inspired kind of ribbons and i remember thinking in my head i was like oh, yeah, how do you actually get it so it looks thick like it has you know yeah. a bit wider yeah, there's different ways you can do it. I mean, you wouldn't have, like, I wouldn't draw an ear for this that had, like, really sharp angles on it or anything that indicated that it was, like, crinkly or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But you can do something like this where uh, you can see the lines that I'm drawing that kind of indicate the edge of the ear. And if I give them a bit more distance in this section here, it kind of implies that there is a bit of bit of weight to it there. And that's right. what you would want with, with, with something like a, a big ear like this. Mm. Um, we might draw it in some sort of, um, just adding some, some legs onto our elephant. I'm not going to go into any detail with them, but I might kind of have them uh, quite sort of foreshortened, like they're kind of disappearing into the distance. So we get a bit more uh, of an angle on this elephant. I'm just going to get rid of all that sketching stuff. And move our elephant to the foreground a bit more. That's cool. So it added a bit of perspective to the, to the feet there. So they're kind of coming towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the great thing about elephants is they're so wrinkly that you can kind of just keep everything very loose and sketchy and it kind of makes sense. As, <laughs> you know, that's what it's meant to look like. Um, uh, all right. And I'm going to put some big highlights on the eyes to make them nice and shiny. I'm going to work some um, big eyebrows into this guy. And he's got a funny, he's got a hat on, doesn't he? I kind of basically remember this. Um, I think there's a feather in the in the trunk. Oh yeah, a feather in the trunk. Mm. Like he's holding a feather. Yes. Uh, okay, great. If I remember correctly, I'm gonna get I'm, I'm gonna ask Misty to double check. She keep, she she knows all this stuff. Um, she had our hunchback um, info, um, which we needed before. So I Google it, but it's always fun for me just to prove my ignorance on stream live. It's always a bit of fun. <laughs> I, I, I don't a, want to um, cheat and Google the answers and make it seem like I've figured it all out. Yeah, yeah. I did a um, uh, uh, a job for, for Disney uh, earlier this year, and it was my first time ever working um, sort of in a sort of official context for, for Disney, drawing some of some of their characters. Wow. And it's it was such an interesting experience because you kind of think of the characters like the cartoons; they're relatively simple things to draw but um because we know them so well and you've seen them in films every single bit of it really needs to be exactly right to match that character or is it you, you kind of know them so well it um like any any kind of deviation from um what you know the character to look like mm. um just makes it all feel wrong so it was really interesting in sort of realizing like how um detail oriented you have to be with the, with this kind of thing i mean obviously this doesn't look exactly like them though um I uh, don't have any reference to the character, but um, were I doing a, an official Dumbo, you'd mm. really need to get every single bit just right. And I, yeah, I imagine they would almost come with like, I don't know what the term would be, but almost like a style guide um, that you would have for a logo or something. Like these are all the do nots, or, or are there just lots of poses? Do you get it? Uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely give you a lot of reference. And the, the other thing is that, um, which I hadn't experienced before, is that the art directors, the people that were commissioning the, the work from me, were also the illustrators themselves. So mm. you'd send off a sketch, and if you've done something wrong, they literally are taking it, they'll draw the right character at the top and send it back to you. Okay, fix this one up. So you really can't oh, wow. fool anyone. They're, they're super on top of it, which is, which is great. It was really cool, because usually you're used to being sort of like, I'm the illustrator in the room. I'm, I'm the drawing professional, but they, they can draw better than I can. So um, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's super cool. I mean, Disney, that's that's amazing. Mm. Um, they're lucky to have you. Um, so yeah, it was Stampy the elephant from The Simpsons. No, no, you're right. It was Dumbo. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you good? Do you need a break before we keep going? You're doing all right. No, no you're happy. Let's do a couple more. Yeah. Okay, we got a couple more. We got time for a couple more. Um, okay, I keep because I have the name of the correct name of what it is at the very start. I'm really struggling not to read the, the answer first. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is um, uh, Johanna's throwing this in because she knows I can't say this word. An anthropomorphic. Hey, I did it. <laughs> anthropomorphic, soft voiced, cuddly, lovable, and quiet teddy bear. 
and uh, anathromorphic. Okay. I've, I've got a little suffers. idea. Um, I'll give myself an additional challenge of trying to draw the official version of this this bear um, because I have um, and I'm I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it exactly right from from memory. Um, oh gosh, this is tricky. Because it, it's like I was saying with with Disney, it's it, there, there is a there's a very um, exact look for this for this character, mm. and if I don't get it right, it's not gonna it's not gonna sell. Um, hmm. Okay. But one thing I remember is the, the the character's eyes are actually quite wide apart, which is quite um, quite uncommon for a lot of a lot of cartoon characters. Um, they usually have sort of like cute close together eyes like that. Right. But this one's just got little dots for eyes and they're quite wide apart. And I think he's got a kind of like, I'm guessing this is Winnie the Pooh that we're talking about. Um, yeah, he's got okay. a kind of um, sort of innocent, bewildered, slightly befuddled kind of look. And I think having his eyes slightly spaced further apart, like that gives him a bit of that sort of dreamy kind of quality to him. Um, uh, that, anyway, that's my interpretation of it. So. He put his eyes in, and he actually sometimes has like a little, a little wrinkle under his eyes, which is, uh, uh, which is also quite uncommon for for like a, a children's book character or a Disney mm. character like that. Um, he looks like a fine bear, but there's something about the shape of his head that that I've that I've missed out on here. Um, I might uh, Google an image afterwards and we can compare and contrast as well. This is such an interesting exercise trying to draw these things from memory because mm. if you haven't done it a bunch of times, it's quite it's quite challenging. Um, I, I can remember once I had this experience of being at a pub trivia and um, being at a big table of, of, of friends and uh, there was a um, um, one of the, the sort of challenges that the pub trivia was giving out was... Um, if people could draw a, a Pikachu from from Pokemon, um, oh, right. and um, and of, of course everyone sort of gave me the piece of paper straight away. Yeah. Um, but again, not having a TV when I grew up, like I have a vague idea of what Pikachu looks like, but I couldn't do it, and I lost to this other guy, and it's still rankled me to this day. Um, it's so it's so funny because you're the absolute perfect person to have for the drawing, the drawing skills, but like no pop culture reference <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except things that have bleeded out like onto the internet that you may have stumbled across or you yeah. know something yeah, like that definitely. amazing yeah. i love it i love it you've got the, you've got this gift but then you have this like achilles heel taking you away just so you're not too powerful <laughs> you know you've got to have got to have some sort of weakness of pop culture knowledge. Yeah, yeah it's your kryptonite for pub trivia and pictionary amazing <laughs> um oh man you know what I, 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 I'm, I, I don't hate this drawing but it's not right it's it's not it's not winning the poo um okay um uh, i'm just gonna quickly uh find some some reference I once did a, uh, there's such affection for Winnie the Pooh, the character, I love Winnie the Pooh. Um, uh, I did a, a sketch once of a kind of like a uh, sort of down on his luck, haggard, older looking Winnie the Pooh. And this was years ago and I put it on my Instagram. And I've never had something that people took so against. People really didn't like that I'd, that oh, I'd really? drawn Winnie the Pooh um, looking looking kind of rough. Because um, I think people just, they just love him so much. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, all right. I see it now. Um, um, if you if you don't mind indulging me for a second, um, um, yeah, bring then, it up and let's talk about the the yeah what you see like. Let's, um, let's for sure. uh, quickly talk about. It. So this is this is my um, first version of uh, Winnie the Pooh that, that I've, I've had a go at, and you can see obviously it's 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 really wrong. I kind of got the the the, the little eye. I, uh, eyebrows high up and the eyes wide apart. I kind of had some of those things, but there's a mm. bunch of really key things that I've missed out in here. So I'm just going to quickly sketch the same character um, in the same kind of pose. Um, and uh, um, I'll see if I can do a little bit better this time. So one thing that I did get right is that Winnie the Pooh has absolutely no neck. He just kind of like his head right. kind of goes down, but straight into his body. Um, so and I kind of had an idea of that, but not quite to the to, to the correct extent. And 
I, the, I think the main thing that I missed is that his head's like kind of sofa shaped, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like he's right. got these big cheeks that come up and then a little head at the top and, uh, and I've really missed uh, that bit out. So we've got the, um, the eyes quite wide apart there. He's got like a little heart shaped nose that I didn't quite get. And his, um, his mouth is very specific. And the way that his mouth works, it kind of indicates the point of the, it's kind of the muzzle of, of, of his face, which is this very kind of archetypal um, teddy bear look. Um, mm. And he's got like a kind of um, very typically Disney drawn mouth that is kind of got a big smile at top and then it kind of is quite creased in the corners and having that little tongue poking down as well. Um, I haven't got his eyes quite low enough, so I'm just going to select those and move them down a bit more. And I think they still could be quite a part. That gives us space for the little um, eyelash, sorry, eyebrows up top. And then I got his ears completely wrong. They're not sort of normal teddy bear ears. They kind of poke out the top of his head, more like an actual bear, really. Um, mm. And then he's got um, his shirt. I kind of had an idea of it where I was drawing it coming out here where it's kind of away from his body, but I hadn't realized it is it even kind more of... mid-drift, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of mid-drift. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's like exposing his cute big round belly. Um and and yeah, that was another thing missed out on there. Um and then and I hadn't quite um got um that he's really, he's shaped like a sort of uh, a, a physical toy teddy bear. So the way that his legs are attached and, and the way his feet um, look. Uh, oh, they're kind of uh, on the side. Like they're kind of. Yeah, yeah. They're it. kind of, he's kind of, um, so is it pigeon toed? Uh, or the sort of splayed up. Anyway, again, not not a perfect uh, Winnie the Pooh there, but a, a, a lot closer that second time around. Anyway, I find that really interesting, going over that thing and sort of pulling out what are all those little key features that make the character correct. Yeah, me too. And I wonder if, like, the beginning of some of these characters, there there is, you know, you know, probably physical hand sketches of all these different versions of what Winnie the Pooh could have been, or these characters yeah. could have been. Um, it's like, well, what if we made the ears bigger or smaller or on the side or the eyes bigger or what if, cause they're kind of like drawn lines for the eyebrows with, yeah. you know, that yeah. shade to kind of, you know, it's almost like he's wearing a visor kind of thing. That's just to indicate a bit of depth there. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, and one, you, I, I did yeah. a, uh, a sort of character drawing course a little while ago. And one thing they told me, which is really interesting is that with all these characters, you really want them to have a very identifiable silhouette. Like it really mm. helps even like you've got like they're all going to be the same color all the time and um, wearing the same clothes and things like that but even um sort of without the character there's something about the shape of his head and the ears and stuff like that but that silhouette is really important so i think designers spend a lot of time making sure that's really identifiable with a lot of characters anyway we've, we've I think gone that's... on a tangent I think I think that's really um, I think that's really interesting. Actually, um, last week we were doing some pixel art with Jeremy Lord, and he was talking about the importance of the silhouette in pixel oh, art right. because you're so yeah. far away. Um, and he was he wasn't sort of saying this is the only way to do pixel art, but he was saying um, he's found it very valuable in in this particular sense, doing like 16, 16 bit, is to actually start with the silhouette and then build in from there because you've right. got such so much little information in there. Um, you really want the silhouette to be. Insta you know, as instantly as possible, recognizable and as close to what, you know, it's got to look functional or something like that. And a, a single pixel here and not there can make a huge difference. So it's really interesting that you brought up silhouette again. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, in almost completely different um, context. Very cool. Hey, five minutes left, cool. guys. Five, five okay. minutes left. Do you want to have another go? One sure, more? sure. Let's do one, one last one. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right, Jahan, I'm just going to grab one, okay? Um, try and react to it so it gives her a second. She's frantically working in the background. It's great. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm like, we'll probably get through two. We've done like eight. Um, okay, standing 24 feet tall, he's got huge ears, a sharp nose, and a pale, wrinkly face. Okay. I'll leave well, it at yeah, that for yeah, now, yeah, and I've got yeah, more yeah. If, you, if you need more, but consider um, time. Yeah, hitting it over me because uh, this is a character drawn by my favorite illustrator, Quinton Blake. So I'm guessing it's the BFG. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity to, um, oh, gosh, 
Good guess. Um, so, um, uh, so there's the Disney version of the, the, the BFG, and there's the original illustrated version of the BFG. Um, and um, I'm a little hesitant to, to, to give the world, but I spent many years of um, my life trying to draw like Quentin Blake and sort of ripping off his style as much as I could. Um, but it's something I've always done with ink on paper to try and sort of duplicate his style as much as I could. Um, and uh, there's no way I'll be able to sort of um, uh, sort of pull it off now. Um, but the, he has a, a, a wonderful, very, very loose, loose style of drawing. Um, but you kind of get the sense that um, uh, Quentin Blake, um, like his drawings are sketchy and loose that make them look kind of um, uh, almost like a, a like they're childlike in a way. And they're very, um, mm. uh, they're, they're not confronting in any way um, because of their, their looseness. But you can tell he really knows what he's doing. Um, like uh, all, all the, um, there, there's, a, there's a really strong technical kind of underpinning to um, a, a lot of his, his work um right. and it's it's a way of drawing that I, that, I, that i really really love so um, i'm not going to be able to do something quite right but i'll try something really sketchy that's kind of along along similar lines so if i start just drawing up uh, a head uh, for this character this isn't going to look anything like the queen of like one but we'll try something uh, along um similar similar lines um so you, you can see i'm keeping my line work super super loose for something like this yeah. Um, and I'm kind of leaning into the mistakes that I'm making and letting the pen make blotches and scratches and things like that. Um, uh, so I, I'm sort of really focusing on the looseness of the line, but I'm going to try and work in lots of detail in terms of like, I'm going to get the buttons on there. Maybe he's wearing a vest that's got a sort of a, a cross hatch pattern. So it's this combination of sort of paying attention to the, the right things, but um, keeping it very loose at the same time. I think his character's often has got a big belt in the middle there. Um, and with Quentin Blake, he'll often sort of ignore things like, he'll, yeah, there, there is something childlike in his drawing, but he'll sort of draw the body and then he'll kind of just like, instead of trying to integrate the arms in, he'll kind of just stick them on the sides. So I'm not going to worry about anything sort of joining up um, uh, bits of this. I'm going to sort of, he's got a, a loose sh uh, shirt that's rolled up to the elbows. Um, we're going to draw some hands in there and again with Quentin Blake, just not like the, the essence of a hand is there, but it's very loose, but he'll do something right. like just some really loose scratchy lines, but he'll make sure to get, um, some wrinkles on the knuckles or something like that. Mm. Um, I think he's got some kind of arm bands in the original illustrations. Uh, we'll put some hair on his arms as well. And maybe he could be picking up a uh, little Sophie from the books. He's, he's the character that's human size. So let's just draw her super small. I'm interested that you haven't like reduced the size of the brush when you're drawing. Like you're literally going from a 24 foot um, giant to like a two foot two foot kind of person, but you didn't reduce the size of the brush that that I could that I could see. You just zoomed in. Um, yeah, is that, is that yeah. pretty typical? Like, would you ever reduce the brush size or anything, or you have? Oh, control? normally I definitely re reduce the, the brush size. Yeah. I think with with uh, a lot of drawings, like it does look better if the dress uh, with something like this, where I'm sort of leaning into the character of the brush. Um, it sometimes looks a bit weird if you you change the brush size too much. Um, so for something like this, I'm I'm going to keep it keep it the same. But also, I'm I'm really trying to. With Quentin Blake's drawing, it's like he's trying to capture as much as possible with as loose a line as possible. I actually just happen to have out of screen some some wonderful portfolios of his work oh, wow. available. Um, and if you look at some of his work, it's incredibly rough and scratchy the way he's drawing it. But he manages to capture a lot of really interesting detail of the characters, and I yeah. love doing that. So um, I'm sort of. From a distance, you totally understand what you're looking at, but um, any close detail, it's quite abstract. Mm. So I think with BFG, he had these um, these trousers, kind of they were kind of like three quarter trousers. He had these big sandal shoes on, and we're really focusing on some sort of really gnarly toes. Sorry, Flynn, I'm, I'm sort of fanning out here and just going for it with them. <laughs> oh no, you're right. But actually, we, we're at we're out of time. I'm getting I'm getting okay, okay, the news okay, is okay. going to start. So, 
Um, we have about I'm 30 not, seconds. I'm, I'm still put a little bit, little bit of hair on him and we're good. Okay. That, that crept go. up on BFG. me. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. This has been a blast. Um, we'll be back on Thursday for more Adobe Live um, with, with Bill Hope. And Bill, thank you so much for joining us. This has been great fun. Yeah, it's been great. Um, thanks everyone for watching and um, yeah, hopefully see you on Thursday. We'll see you all on Thursday. Bye. Okay. Thanks guys. See ya.